Right, welcome everyone to our latest um, webinar that we're doing as part of the uh, Kickstart scheme. I'll introduce you to the uh, lovely Jo Thackeray who can uh, tell you all about herself and the subject she's going to speak about because I think it's a, a really important subject for employing people, especially um, young people via the Kickstart scheme. So over to you Jo. Well, thank you. Thanks for the introduction, Mark. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a life and business coach and passionate about empowering others um, to develop themselves and, and be the best version of themselves they can. And as um, Kickstart employers, it's really, really important to ensure that the young people that you're bringing into your um, organisations really have that time to be developed, to be empowered and um, you know, have a really great introduction into the world of work. So this is a real um, top level introduction to coaching. I know some of you may have um, uh, experienced coaching before, but it's just a real overview to get us thinking about why coaching is important, why taking a coaching uh, approach is important, um, what we can do to help the young people and how we can think about our coaching approach. So it's really just to get you thinking today, thinking about your own organization, how you manage and lead your teams, what could you do differently? What do you need to um, improve on? Um, you know, maybe you're already doing some fantastic things, but really just to get you thinking about how you're really going to develop these young people. So I'm just going to share my screen. And we'll just do slideshow, just bear with me a second. Okay, so Mark has already introduced himself, so we'll skip over Mark. So we're going to look at the benefits of a coaching culture, like I said, and coaching is releasing a person's potential to maximize their own performance. It is helping them to learn rather than teaching them. And that's what's really, really important. Um, and, and for the participants in this session today, um, it needs to be a really interactive session. So I'd really love questions, interaction, chat, anything that you want to talk about and also um, ask questions that may help the audience that are, are, are listening as well. Um, but before we start thinking about um, a coaching approach, I wanted to share a really lovely video uh, with you from uh, Ian Wright, um, the football, footballer. And this video really um, demonstrates the power of how somebody influenced him at a really young age and really set him on the right track to achieve his goals. So we'll just play the video. I'm not hearing the audio, Joe. Can anybody hear the audio? Oh, there's a little flaw in the plan there then. <laughs> okay, nobody can hear the audio. Um, I'm not quite sure how I can um, sort that out. But the crux of the matter is, basically, it's Ian Wright's teacher from a very early age. And he was the, the, the first person that really believed in him and really gave him the confidence and empowered him to really reach for his goal and reach for his potential. And it was that one person that really made him think about where he wanted to go in, in um, the future. And that's what's really, really important here. It's a shame you can't hear the video because it is a lovely video. Um, but the important part of this is how that one person influenced um, Ian at a very, very early age. Um, so thank you for bringing that up, John. Uh, I'm stood here listening, thinking, yeah, this is a lovely video. Nobody else can hear it. Um, if, you, um, if you share the URL in the, in the chat window, John, I'll have a look after the, the webinar today. I will do. Yeah, we can share that in the follow up, I think, Jenny, as well, can't we? Because it really is a lovely video. Thank you. OK, so it's really good to think about what your experience is of coaching. So um, have you experienced coaching? Do you use a coaching approach and what have the benefits been to you? So, um, you know, the, the four of you that are on the session now, have any of you experienced coaching before or been coached? Do you want to go first, Jenny? Yeah, I have. Um, as Jo knows, Jo has coached me herself um, and I, um, I have worked with another coach also and I found it to be uh, very useful. It's the skill that I 
would have liked to have had when I had a team uh, because I feel that it would have stood them in good stead. The team that I managed, there was a limit to the motivators that we could put into place for these people for a range of reasons within the organisation. And it would have been nice to be able to understand how I could um, help them to move forward, perhaps into a different organisation so that they were able to meet their goals and to an extent with some of them to understand um, for them to, to for them to for me to understand what their goals were so that I was able to help yeah. them to achieve that. Yeah, and, that, and that's really important with coaching. It's understanding what your goals, your dreams, whatever it is may be, and how you're going to work towards them, how you're going to break those things down into small steps and work towards them. And it, it's great, Jenny, that you recognise that perhaps if you if you used a coaching approach, you may have been able to, to do even more with them. I'm sure you did loads with them, but you, know, you may have been able to do more with them. Um, anybody else like to share any thoughts? So I work for a um, small business with quite a flat structure. So I, I don't think I really genuinely sort of use a coaching approach in, in my in my current role. But part of the reason for joining today's webinar and um, is that we're looking to expand. So we're going to take on a, a couple of, at least a couple of people later this year as well. So it's just trying to understand, obviously, how we can. Um, how we can really help the, the new starters to sort of achieve their uh, their potential, really. Good, that's good to hear, um, John. And 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 it is it is about helping people to achieve their potential. And do you know what? There is no coaching. There is no magic formula. It is so simple. It's just about asking those right questions. It's just about listening. It's about all those things. And um, you know, there is no magic wand for coaching it is no. really just really good conversations listening understanding people building that trust empowering them and um delegating stuff to them to enable them to grow so um really lovely to have you here john and and, and great to think that you're although you haven't explored it before with your team that you're thinking how you're going to explore it with new team members so outside of work I, as, as mark knows i i coach a um an under 10s football team so although it's very very different but I certainly sort of I do understand sort of how yeah. like how you sort of um the benefits of coaching and, and the way and I think the way to approach it obviously very different with, with 10 year old boys but still <laughs> it's still it's still an, an important thing it is and if you know anybody that's in sport that may be listening to this now you know you will completely understand the power of coaching because no sports person gets to where they they, you know, on that Olympic podium or whatever without a coach. So, um, John, I, yeah, you're, you're coaching, you're coaching a different age group and you're coaching in a different space, but it's still all about that encouragement, that yeah. self-belief, that development, that empowerment. Um, so absolutely brilliant. Anything else anybody would like to say at this point? We've got another lady joined us, Jean Lee, who might want to be involved in the discussion. Okay, lovely. Okay, Mark, would you like to add to the discussion or? Yeah, obviously, as someone who does a lot of coaching, um, I'd like to think I use a coaching approach. <laughs> <laughs> but also, it's, I think it's important to say that I use a coach as well, because it'd be really ironic if a coach didn't believe in coaching. Yeah. And, you know, and as I've discussed with you as well, I'm a, a member of a professional body that is full of coaches and mentors and, you know, we use each other and, and bounce ideas and, you know, because the whole point of a, of a coach is often they can see something that the person can't because they've got, they've got distance from the, from the thing, you know. Um, I always use the example of kind of a golf coach. You can't see yourself at the golf ball. So even if you're a very good golfer, you need somebody else to look at your golf swing and say, look, this is why you're hitting it wrong. Yeah, and, and, and it's using those questions and digging deeper and, and challenging, but in a kind way, but really challenging that individual's thought process so they think outside the box and they look at different solutions, which is really important. And you're right, as a coach, you know, we need to have coaches as well. And that's how I came to coaching, because I had a fantastic coach. Uh, many years ago and that then influenced me to to go where I'm, I'm going now and, and he was brilliant and um, so just thinking about that then um, and thinking about Ian Wright and and who influenced him who was your biggest influencer if you've got a pen and paper 
write the person down if you if you have got that one person that really influenced your career your working life whatever it may be who was it that gave you that real um, maybe self-belief gave you that real burst of encouragement when you first came into the world of work so maybe write that person down and um, hold that thought and we'll we'll revisit that okay any anything else before we move on okay so what are the benefits of taking a coaching uh, approach so whatever your measure of success is a strong coaching culture will help you achieve it absolutely help you achieve it every single time so we're going to go through the benefits and if there's anything that comes up for you please you know either put a, a question in the chat or, or raise your hand and uh, we can have a discussion so effective coaching helps people quickly settle into new positions, giving them the space to reflect and learn in the early levels, uh, in the early days, sorry. So that, you know, when you've got your new people coming in, um, you know, if you're taking that coaching approach, it will really help them settle in. It increases employee engagement. Strong, co uh, sh strong coaching cultures consistently correlate with higher employee engagement levels. And it helps to develop the potential of employees. So coaching nurtures a growth mindset and an appreciation of potential uh, capabilities, which is so important to um, nurture that growth mindset so that people are open to development, they're open to new ideas, they're open to stepping out of their comfort zone. Um, and that's really, really important. And if you think about the young people coming in, they'll be massively stepping out of their comfort zones um, coming into the world of work. So they really need that, that support. So it also helps improve work-life balance. And I think over the last year with COVID and, and everything that's happened, work-life balance is key. And what we don't want is our young people coming in, thinking that they, you know, to be able to get where they need to be, they have to work ridiculous hours and, you know, all that. You know, we want them to be passionate. We want them to put the time and energy in, but we want them to have that work-life balance as well. So coaching also creates perspective, perspectives and helps people find ways to ensure a better balance in their lives. And again, that links back to our, our well-being. And coaching improves communication skills. The ability to take on new perspectives through coaching results in better communication. And coaching gives insights into what people are and could be capable of and boosts self-belief. And, and that's the crux of it. We've really got to help our young people believe in themselves. Because um, as we know, um, you know, those self-limiting beliefs can sabotage us um, and really bring us down. And we've really got to make sure that we encourage our young people to believe in themselves. And that is key to, to development. And we've got to build trust with the organisation and each other. And the coaching approach really helps build that trust. And that is so, so important. So people feel at ease. They feel they can trust each other. They can trust the organisation. They'll relax and they will develop in, and, you know, um, work on their development more. And all this drives business success. So if we really invest in our people and all these different elements and really help them develop, really help them with their their well-being, their growth mindset, ultimately, it's going to impact positively on your business. You're going to be more productive. You're going to make more sales or whatever it is that you do in your business. Um, and it's got to start with the people. And, and a, the, having a coaching approach absolutely underpins all this. And, and ultimately, the success that you want for your business will just come naturally. So anything that anybody would like to discuss or any questions from, from that section? That, um, that first point, Joe, with regards to, to welcoming uh, a new employee into the business. Um, so we're actually looking to recruit sort of le le later in the year, but are you, are you finding it more difficult now or is in theory, is it more difficult when people are, are working more remotely and that, that sort of the, the normal face-to-face -face interaction that you would have with a, with a new starter in terms of how you build their trust and how you start to really sort of um, coach that individual are you seeing that being more more challenging at the moment? It definitely is. And I think, you know, um, the situation that we've been in, obviously, there's been all the remote working. But what I'm really seeing is organisations and businesses are really starting to look at their well-being policies, look at what they can do to help their teams work remotely. Um, you know, simple things like virtual coffee breaks, you know, giving them permission to say, 
you know, book a virtual coffee with your colleagues. It doesn't have to be about work. It can be about personal, you know, whatever, whatever yeah. you want. Um, and building in those things that can help them with well-being, having, um, you know, well-being events as part of their, their working life, bringing them together, making sure that communication's there, that they're having regular one-to-ones, they're having those regular um, meetings on Zoom or whatever that looks like. Um, and people are having to work a lot harder now to make sure people feel, um, you know, welcomed and included. And it, and it is hard when it, it's remote. Um, I mean, obviously, re- uh, restrictions are relaxing, so we can do more face to face. So if you've got new young people coming in, it would be great to, to have more face to face with them. But I think, you know, thinking about the coaching approach, thinking about the well-being side of your business, what are you doing for your team's well-being? How are you supporting them? And we know that young people now actually look at that when they're looking at organisations and looking for somewhere to work. They want to know how you're going to support them with their well-being. Um, are you offering them days to go volunteering with um, charities? Are you, you know, are you doing well-being events? All those kind of things. So, you know, th- this next generation are really keen on what you're going to do to support them and their well-being as well. Um, so, when you have to do it remotely, you know, you do really need to break it all down and make sure that the communications there, opportunities for those one-to-ones are there and that you are factoring in well-being things that can support them. On that, on that, John, as well, so there's, a, there's a webinar on inducting staff on the YouTube channel. It'd be really good for that. And also, yeah, thank you. we've done a webinar on managing remote teams, which will help. And we're doing one on hybrid working as well, which is that kind of a lot of work. Yeah. This is will go to this kind of, you know, you're in two or three days, you're out two or three days or... Or so yeah. on and so forth, because a lot of you know it's, a lot of workplaces have realised it would be good to get a balance between those sort of things. So um, hopefully both of those will be helpful for you as well in that. Yeah, no, very much. The, the other question I had as well is with regards to again bringing in new people to the business and maybe maybe younger people as well is that we're um, most of the people within our organisation are at a certain age, maybe slightly slightly older. We're not a sort of young and trendy company. People aren't roller skating around the office like they are at Google. <laughs> I just want to think about how we can, as I say, welcome people into the organisation and make sure that they they feel part of part of that organisation as quickly as possible. Yeah, and I think you know, obviously that you know there there is an age, there's a clear age difference there, but actually that can work both ways, and it'd be really good to to buddy people up. Um, with you know if you've got trusted members of of the team that you know are going to give a really good welcome you know buddy them up and and see if because they can learn off each other you've got that mature person that's got experience you've got that young person that may have some great ideas and enthusiasm and actually by buddying them up they're going to learn off each other and I think it's 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 almost saying to your existing team don't assume that these young people coming in can't bring anything to the table does that make sense it's like yeah, let's yeah they bring something different don't they yeah they bring something different let's embrace that let's see what we can learn from them and what they can learn from us and if if you try and promote that culture then you know that would be a a, a great way to look at it um i know that really works really well in volunteering especially in charity shops where you've got such a wide age range of, of volunteers um, so you've got the, the older volunteers, you've got the young Duke of Edinburgh or whatever coming through. And when you see them working together side by side, it's lovely because they just learn so much of each other. So, again, maybe it's about having those conversations with your team before the young people come in and, and agree, right, what, what can we learn from them? What can we do? How can we make it really welcoming for them? Thank you. Um, OK, anything else? But John, me, thank you. Just on that as well, just on that point, Joe, as well related to, to what John said, that with, with corporates, when they put in kind of coaching, mentoring schemes, often they have the coach or the mentor that isn't their line manager. Yeah. And it's harder in an SME, obviously, but mm-hmm. it just, it takes that distance away from, you, you, you don't have to be the bad guy as well. You can't be good cop and bad cop. So yeah, and, and also, you know, it's interesting you say that good cop, bad cop, Um, And and we'll talk about feedback a little bit later on, which is really, really important. And 
it, it, it's about, you know, if you, if you have a mentor that's separate to your line manager, hopefully your line manager will be that person that will give good, you know, constructive feedback and be willing to accept feedback themselves so that you don't end up having that good cop, bad cop scenario, because hopefully your line manager can have that two way conversation so that the the young person or, or whatever can feedback to them about how, how they're being managed, but also get that constructive feedback from their line manager. And, and hopefully, um, you know, that that's constructive and not, oh, it's a one-to-one -one and I'm going to get told off because I haven't done this right. That We want to get away from that, that kind of conversation. But yeah, in, in large organisations, it's great to have a mentor that is completely separate to your line manager as well, but, but difficult in a small business. So... Um, anything else? Okay. So what what we what do we know? What we already know about um, Generation X and Generation Y. So um, we're supporting two generations, like I said, Generation X and Generation Y. And while they are there are clear differences between the two, they both share some common elements. So this is thinking about the young people that you are taking on. So they are better educated. The barriers to entry for further education have been lowered, meaning more young people are opting to continue their education. They are technical natives, so not like me. You know, they've, they've been born and, and into the world of technology and it's all natural to them. So, you know, particularly digital technology is something they have literally grown up with. Many never experienced the pre-internet world. And they are very entrepreneurial. So growing up, they've unknowingly been part of the story of some hugely successful young entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurs. This fuels the entrepreneurial spirit and creates an if they can do it, why can't I do it attitude, which is brilliant because that's really helping them to, to think about, yeah, my self-belief, this is what I'm going to go for. Why can't I do it? I'm going to do it. There's no barriers. And they are socially conscious. So having 24 seven access to traditional news and more importantly, social media means these generations have a far greater awareness of the social issues and challenges that we face today. And because everyone can be a publisher, they can also have a voice. So just thinking of the ages on our group today, and I'm making no assumption of ages, um, but I'm thinking that we're all maybe a similar age. Um, if we think back to when we grew up, particularly as we made our way from the world of education to the world of work, we didn't have any of this. This raises a really important question. Do these young adults actually need help? Surely these facts mean that they are better equipped to cope with what life throws at them. In other words, they have an advantage over um, our generation, which means they have greater opportunities for their future. But living in a world where we're told we can be anything we want to be can feel overwhelming. So when the possibilities presented to you are limitless, the process of making decisions about your future become more complex. So we believe young people can take command of their future by channeling their energy, aspiration and the weight of expectations placed on them. So it's great that our young people now have all this stuff going on, they have access to all this stuff, but actually it can be quite overwhelming and they really need that direction, they really need that support. And this is, you know, as employers, this is what we're here to do. This is what you guys are here to do is to help them with that navigate them uh, way through that first introduction into work and, and help them develop those key personal skills that they need um, to actually get through work and get through life and develop and, and get to where they want to be. So before we move on to the next section, any, any questions around that? Okay. So what do they need from you? So what do they need from us as employees? How can we help them and support them to develop? Um, so they need clarity and direction. We coach young people to understand who they are and what they want. And that goes for anybody. That's how, you know, we, we coach um, each other. You know, we want to find out who we are, what we want, where we want to go, how we want to get there. This means asking questions and giving the young person the safe space to express who they really are. From that comes clarity and with clarity comes direction. 
And that's what a coaching conversation is. It's that safe space for them to explore their thinking and really work out what it is, which direction they want to go. Um, and that's why taking a, a coaching approach is so important. And readiness. Knowing what you want is one thing, getting there is another entirely. We work with young people to prepare them for the realities of work. This means adding to their academic knowledge and the soft skills needed for, uh, with the soft skills needed for the world of work. Um, and as we know, we can have all the qualifications in the world, but if we don't work on those soft skills, that can be a real barrier to helping us develop and progress. And, and this is where, as employees, we really need to help our young people develop that. And absolutely crucial, confidence and belief. We've already touched on this. Coaching with young people is as unique as the individual being coached. In other words, uh, no two coaching experiences are ever the same. But one common goal is to build their self-confidence and self-belief. Even clarity and readiness sometimes aren't enough because there can be barriers that hold us back, including the curse of self-limiting beliefs, self-awareness and self-knowledge. So if nothing else, we really need to help build our young people's self-confidence. And we coach young people to make a lasting change. We want to help them have a new level of self-awareness so they can be self-sufficient. In other words, we equip them to cope with today and tomorrow by giving them tools to help them in their everyday life. And we've already talked about building trust, but building trust with each other and the organisation, building that psychological safety so they can develop and thrive and a culture of trust will create high performance. So they've got to feel safe. They've got to be able to feel they can express themselves. You know, if, if things aren't going right, they can talk about it. Um, you know, they, they've got someone to talk to, they can talk about their challenges, they can talk about their goals and their aspirations, and they will only do that if they feel safe and if they feel that there's that level of trust there. And supporting them, really, really important, this one, supporting them to develop their in, emotional intelligence, their ability to recognise, understand and positively influence their own emotions and the emotions of others. And emotional intelligence is such an important factor um, with, with anybody and, and developing that will really help us navigate ourselves um, through life. And feedback, we'd already touched on, on feedback, giving regular feedback and allowing for constructive conversations, encouraging them to ask lots of questions. So also important to ask for feedback on how they feel they are being managed and what's working for them and what would they like. So it's always a two way conversation. Um, you know, in days gone by, you'd, you'd have your annual review and people probably still do this. You have your annual, your, your annual review and you sometimes go into that with a little bit of dread because you think, oh, you know, they're going to highlight all the things that I haven't been doing. And actually, that's not what feedback should be about. It should be regular feedback so that you're constantly pushing them to develop. You're empowering them to, to try new things. And if things don't go to plan and if things fail, which things do, they learn from it. It's a learning lesson. So it's not a wagging the finger at them and, oh, you know, you've done this wrong and whatever. It's then looking, well, this didn't go quite to plan, discussing it with them. What could they do differently next time to make it? better what can they learn from that and also really important that we ask them how they would like to be managed as well you know are, are we managing them in the right way for them some people actually like to be micromanaged they like to know exactly what they're doing they want to be told everything to the nth degree some people like you to stand, stand back and allow them to get on with things so that two-way conversation that feedback works both ways and is so so important so Anything come up for anybody there? No, think that's a really good thank you. Okay, yeah. well, we're actually going to go into sure. a... Just sorry, Mark. Can you flip back a slide, sorry? I can. So all we discussed there is almost... That's almost the basis of the entire scheme, if you think about it, really, because the government's yeah. baseline for this is that the young people coming in... You know, they've had their confidence dented by the fact they've been out of work for three, six months or, or however long because they've been made redundant or they've come out of school or university at, at the wrong time. Also, we've all been young people and we've not been probably the perfect 
employee. So a lot of learning about work is being in work and understanding the standards. You know, you come out of school or university and you mm -hmm. can get away with stuff that you wouldn't get away in within the workplace. And, you know, fortunately, we probably all had good bosses at the time that understand that young people aren't the finished article and you do need a bit of uh, polishing to, to make sure that, you know, and, th and that's what we encourage people to do is look for these rough diamonds that have the right character traits, just need a bit of polishing, a bit of pointing in the right direction, the soft skills that they don't necessarily teach at university or school. I don't remember my school or my university preparing me for the actual world of work. You learn what work is like in the workplace and if you're fortunate enough to come across a really good boss who does use a coaching approach and stuff like that really benefits you, you know, most of our generation will have experienced bosses sergeant major style shouting at us telling us what to yeah. do you know not the feedback sort of loop and and those sorts of things you know so this is almost the whole crux of the scheme is you know help these people rebuild their confidence build up skills confidence experience improve their cv and they'll not only potentially be a great employee for you but even if they're not they go back into the jobs market with a all that stuff enhanced and are much more likely to get a job with someone else am, am i right in saying mark as well in addition to the training that, that we would offer as an employer that there are some sort of wrapper there's wraparound training as well that is also offered to to that to that new starter is that is that correct yeah, yeah, just to, just to clarify, I won't go into too much details because I don't want to step across Joe huh. and the time and everything like that. So, yeah, so there's, there's three levels. The first is a mandatory training in the DWP outlines, which is half employability stuff, half what they call generic work skills. So quite a few of those are soft skills like, you know, time management, teamwork, you know, uh, all those sorts of things that are really, really useful for them. Then there's the voluntary level, which is kind of job role specific, which is, you know, loads of different courses related to their job. And then we're doing loads of um, webinars like this for the young people, trying to add those soft skills, the, the, the knowledge that will be really useful for them while they're with an employer like you or, or afterwards, really. We're trying to encourage them to invest in their own learning and development because yeah. you know yourself, as a, whether it's a football coach or a business coach or whatever, if, if you find someone that takes your coaching and then applies it really well and finds their own learning and stuff, then then that's the ideal coachee for want of a, a better word. You point them in the right direction and they then go and, and run with it, really. But I think you also don't realise everyone's different, aren't they? So sometimes the way that you coach one individual will really benefit them, but you then have to do it completely different for somebody else as well. So we're going to take or maybe two or three people this year. So, so this has been really useful for me to start thinking about how... Obviously, we don't know who those candidates are and sort of the different um, skills that they're going to have. But just, just think about how we're going to have to work with those as individuals, not just having one training program, one sort of blanket approach to the new starters. If we're really going to sort of um, if they're all going to succeed within the business. And that's really good to hear, John, is, is you know, you're identifying that actually they are all individuals and they'll have different ways of consuming information and different ways of communicating. They'll have different levels of confidence. And it is about getting to know that individual. And, and like Mark said earlier, you know, these are young people that are just fresh. And if we if we really empower them and really help them build those, that emotional intelligence and all those tools that they need in their in their um, in their toolbox, you know, to get them through life. If we can really influence that and, and it can be a really positive um, experience, then they're gonna go through life. Um, you know, absolutely grasping every opportunity and also their experience then will have a ripple effect on the people that they may manage and lead in the future. So, um, you know, this is a real fantastic opportunity to influence the next generation so that we all have a coaching approach. And, and like Mark said, you know, gone are the days of dictating, you know, I'm the boss, you do as I say, you don't have an opinion and I don't want your, you know, whatever. Um, you know, those days have gone it is about discussion it is about welcoming ideas and, and empowering people to have a go and empowering people to have a go and fail it doesn't matter if they fail it's a learning lesson and they'll learn something and then they'll they'll take that learning forward so um yeah I, lo I love to love to hear that John and actually we are now going into a little bit of a 
reflection session to just think about what you've heard so far and what's coming up for you. You know, is there anything that, you know, John, you've already said that you started thinking about how you're going to treat them and, and get to know them as individuals. Is there anything else that's coming up for people thinking about their existing organization, their team, anything they need to kind of tweak, introduce, improve on? Anybody like to share anything? I think something that it might be my generation, but I think something that I struggled with when I first started out in the world of work was my bosses didn't explain why something had to be done. You would be sat in front of a pile of stuff, because I'm an administrator, sat in front of a pile of stuff and told to basically move it from basket A to basket B without any explanation as to, and, and you knew it was going off to basket C, but you didn't know why. And, and I think part of bring, part of helping someone into the workplace is to explain not just what they're doing, but how that impacts on the wider organization. Because by doing that, you're giving them a better idea of, of how they fit in, and which I think adds to their confidence because they can see clearly where they, where they fit in. They also can then understand what they can influence and also have a better understanding of how they're going to be able to, um, what would be realistic and what wouldn't be realistic to change. Yeah, absolutely spot on, Jenny. If somebody understands why they're doing what they're doing and, and they are they are a cog in a machine and everybody, you know, it doesn't matter what your role is in that organization, everybody is equal, everybody is equally as important. And Jenny, if you'd known why you were doing that, what, what would that have done for you if you knew, if they'd explained to you why you were doing that process, what would you have felt? Depending on the process we were looking at, for some processes I would have felt that I understood why I was being told to do things in a certain way, which was more long-winded than I felt was necessary. Um, and in, in some cases, I would have just been less bored by it because I would have understood where it was going. My, my first job was literally to sit in the bowels of the earth in a, at a desk and piles of letters came in and I opened the envelopes and stuck something on the front of them and put them in the file and sent the file in a basket back upstairs again. <laughs> so I never, never saw them come back down again. So I never really knew. You'd see a letter about something that seemed quite interesting and it would never ever come back down and you would never really know whether such and such a thing has actually ever, um, had, had, whether that had actually made a difference. And also by not really knowing why you were doing what you were doing, there was no opportunity there for you to make suggestions to tweak the system or grow or learn something. Um, and also you weren't understanding the impact that your role was making because nobody was explaining anything to you. So, you know, that, that can dent people's confidence. It makes people bored. Like you said, Jenny, you switch off. You're like, you know, what, what's the point in this? Nobody's explaining anything. You know why should I be interested if they're not interested in in explaining me so explaining to me so yeah um you know re really good um example there thanks Jenny anybody else like to add anything else any other reflections uh, I'm just sort of thinking about um when we do hopefully bring these um people on board later this year just sort of where we're going to be in terms of um, social distancing and I'm hoping that we'll be able to deliver a lot of this face to face, um, and um, also just thinking about because we're, we're, as I say, we're a small organisation. I'm actually based a little way from our um, from our main office, and it's about sort of just the logistics of being, but maybe being having to be in the office a little bit more for the first few weeks. Just really making sure that that when we when we do bring on these these new starters, that it's a really really positive time for them. I, I've started roles in the past, I'm sure we all have, where you turn up and they haven't even sorted out like a laptop for you to use or just a basic tool. So I really want to make sure it's a really positive environment and they make a really, really strong start. So it's, it's, it's sort of not, not daunting, but as I say, just a lot to consider just to make sure that, that we, we, we do the best that we possibly can. Yeah, and, and that's good to hear. And also thinking about maybe that flexibility as well in that uh, uh, those first few days, especially with the restrictions and COVID and, you know, how, how can you be a little bit flexible with them, but, you know, welcome them as, as, as well as you can. And um, I, I just remember an example of my, my own, actually, is I started a new 
role and um, my first day in this new role, I, I'd been with the organisation for quite some time, but I, I, I'd got promoted to a different role. And I, I went in and, oh my goodness, the welcome from the team was, well, there was no welcome, basically. It was, <laughs> there was nothing. Um, part of the team didn't really know why I was there, what I was doing, nothing. Um, and it was the first day there I thought, oh my goodness, what have I done? Why have I come to this? But do you know what? I just kept that positive face on and I, I just got to know people because um, I, I was managing them. So I had to really work on the culture of um, change within that um, department and, and really get to know those individuals because that first day that there, there was no welcome, I, I was about as welcome as as a fly I think that, that was it so I've experienced that and, and then again that was because my line manager didn't set the scene properly for that team didn't um, communicate with them very well about what my role was what what you know what my expectations were going to be what I was there for so again that communication that you know talking to the team all that is so so important so that everybody feels informed and um you know goes along with the journey basically any other reflections before we move on okay so we're just going to think a little bit about what skills do you need to develop for for coaching um Hopefully you can all see the words that will come up on my screen. But what I would like to do is, is maybe have a few words shouted out um, from you guys. What, what's, what things do you think you need to develop for, for a coaching approach? What, what are those skills that you need to have in place? Listening. With yeah, listening. Yeah, communication. I think, I think listening is crucial, really, isn't it? Because I think a lot of yeah. us are very good at speaking without sometimes may, maybe listening. Yeah, Question. communication, challenge beliefs, anything else? Questioning. Yeah, questioning. They're not coming up in order here, but you can see. Uh, can, can you see them? Can you see all those words around my little icons down the side? Can yeah. bring them up? Yes. Yeah, you can see them. Empowers others, flexibility. Yeah. Patience. Yeah, patience is a good one. I think understanding, trying to understand. Yeah, well, understand. I think that's important. And em empathy as empathy, well, yeah. yeah. So solution and solution spaces as well. So as a as a coach and as employee, you know, we're we're all going to have bad days. We're all going to have days where we go into work and we just feel uh, because of something that's going on at home or whatever. But if a problem arises, then our job as a coach or an employee is to really help those individuals to find those solutions. Yes, we can't do it like that because that block is there. But actually, how could we do it? Let's let's be really solutions focused. So that's really important. Open ended questions, emotional intelligence. We've already thought about builds rapport. And like John, you've already said, building that relationship with those individuals when they come in. Anything else that comes to mind? Yeah, you know, one of the things I always think that's really important and uh, don't know if you'd agree with this is almost sometimes biting as, as a coach but uh biting your tongue and, and letting them rather than telling them it, and this is you know really especially with young employees they ask a question you want to tell them the answer but but they don't actually learn the when i went yeah. to my coaching qualifications they they said you've got to think of yourself like a like a, a teacher you know if a if a young person is struggling to answer a question, the teacher doesn't just say to the mass question, the answer's 27, move on. You know, they, they help them come to the conclusion themselves, which again, re reflects in the patients because it takes a lot longer to help them answer the question themselves than just mm -hmm. giving the answer. But if you only ever keep giving a student an answer, then they never learn how to you know, a maths teacher wouldn't just give them the answers all the time. They help yeah, them and get to the conclusion themselves. Absolutely spot on, Mark. And that is that is the crux of, of being a coach is, um, you know, as JK Rowling says, you already have the magic inside you. You know, we just need to, to pull it out. And, that, and that's, you know, that's what we do as coaches. We all have the answers inside ourselves. 
but sometimes we just don't allow ourselves to have that time to dig those answers out or we don't think about finding those answers out ourselves and and yeah I mean there's so many times with some of my clients I have to really bite my tongue because you know I, I, I'm asking all these different questions and um, asking challenging questions but in a kind way and you can see their mind is working all the cogs are going but they're, they're not they're not just quite getting there yet and you really do have to um really keep that that um you know like say bite that tongue so that you you're not just giving the answer you, you're actually asking them questions and getting them to really work through it and find the answer themselves and that's what's really really important and that's where um you know as, and also clarifying comes into that as well clarifying what people are actually saying get into the crux of it you know really drilling down what is it that they they need to learn what is it that they want to develop um avoids telling there you go as if by magic it came up <laughs> avoids telling um self-awareness we've got to be self-aware as well we've got to be aware of what's going on around us and um you know when we're, we're coaching other people any other words that come to mind with um with emotional intelligence joe anything in particular that you would suggest because i think that's something that we all we will strive to to keep improving really isn't it the emotional intelligence but how how do we do that with, with young people and maybe people who are starting in, in the business? And it, well, you know, the young people that are coming in, that, that could almost be something that you, you talk about in a, in a team meeting or make it part of their, their induction that you talk about emotional intelligence and what that means and understanding relationships with other people, being aware of other people's emotions and being in touch with their own emotions, learning how to manage their own emotions. And, you know, it's complicated stuff sometimes. It's hard for us all to manage our emotions. And especially when you're young, if, if you know, if your uh, manager asks you to do something and, and that young person doesn't like being asked to do something, you know, you've got all those different emotions that can come out, that, you know, anger or that, I'm not doing it, you know, whatever. Um, so, it's about having those conversations with the young people, really getting them to think about their own emotions, how they're going to manage those, how they're going to interact with other people, understanding other people's emotions and, and really getting them to understand that emotional intelligence will absolutely get them through life. Um, working on that emotional intelligence is a really key, is a really good skill to have. Um, some people it's just naturally there other people's really have to work on so when we're bringing these young people in don't be afraid to maybe plan into their induction or the time that they're with you maybe some little workshops about things like this because you know it can really help them it might help your existing team as well yeah. um, and it just give you all a bit of, of food for thought so you know and use those words emotional intelligence start getting them to think about that different language that's out there because the you know the, there'll be different language that they're hearing that they haven't heard before that they might think oh well what does that mean you know and and, and not and not want to ask um and they might hear all these other different words that are, that we use in the world of work that they haven't heard and um but emotional intelligence is, is something really key and i think if you could do a session with them on it or something like that, it would really help them to, to understand why it's so important. Does that help? Yeah, very much so, thank you. Yeah. Okay, any other words? Reflective, that's a good one. Yeah, Joe, on this as well, I think sometimes, um, I don't know if you agree or disagree, I think sometimes the, the semantics we use, the words we use, you know, boss, manager line manager they don't reflect these sort of things people don't see themselves as a as a coach because the the connotations of those words are different to being yeah. a coach and no, no one says you know i'm going to be your, your coach when you come into work or, or whatever it's expected to be a external third party or something but the general principle of the semantics of coaching as i kind of see it, it's about bringing the best out of other people the words manager and line manager and boss don't always have those connotations, do they? So they, they don't. And, and one word that I like is leader, because I think leader is that you're, to me, it evokes that you're leading your team, that hopefully you're leading them through whatever happens, but you're leading by example and you're, you're empowering them along the way, you're delegating to them as well. And I think 
that's what's really, really important as well is delegation, delegating to young people and trusting that they will um, be able to do what that you're you're asking them to do and giving them the chance to do it. And and I agree with you when you say boss and manager, it just conjures up that, um, you know, they're going to tell you to do things rather than coach you and, and empower you to do things. So again, it, it could be something simple like look at the looking at the um, language that you use in your organization and and thinking, well, you know, how, how can we use different language so that we're encouraging people um, to have that coaching approach rather than that, you know, dictating um, approach. So, you know, being reflective as well, it's always, we talked about feedback, that's a space as well for that reflection. Reflect on what's gone before, was it good? Can they improve it? You know, what can they take forward? So having time for reflection is really important as well. Resilience, that's another another good tool for us all to have along with our emotional intelligence. And, and resilience is something, again, we need to work on. And, and young people, they'll be at the start of their resilience journey, although some of them may already have, have got some good resilience depending on, on where they've come from and what they've already experienced. But resilience and emotional intelligence, again, two key things. If you could build that into your induction to you know, talk to them about those things and let them understand what it means and how they can work on it, then you know, that would be a great induction. Listening, um, we've already mentioned listening, absolutely. Uh, really listening and then choosing the right questioning to get them to dig deeper and, and find the answers that they need. And feedback, we've already talked about feedback. So um, giving constructive feedback and, and helping them work through it and also do it regularly. So it, it doesn't all build up into a whatever, you know, if, if something's not going right, tackle it, tackle it there and then don't leave it to fester because that's when it just gets out of control then. And values, and we'll talk about values in the next slide, but Values are so important, uh, you know, our own personal values, but our organizational values as well. And, and I'll touch on that in the next slide. And um, social awareness. And I think the last one is non-judgmental. Really important. Um, you know, it's human nature that we all will judge people by the way that they look, what they say, the language that they use, whatever. And it's really hard not to have uh, you know, not to be judgmental. So we really need to work on that as well and, and be non-judgmental. Anything anybody wants to pick up on on that or anything else that you'd like to add? No? Okay. So we touched on values there and um, values is something that could be a whole completely different session, to be honest, because values are so, so important. And as an organisation, hopefully you've already identified your values um, and it may be three core values it may be four five whatever however whatever your values are but it's all right naming your values it's then understanding as an organization and individuals how are you going to live those values how are you going to bring those values to life um, and values help underpin your organization and keep you all on track it helps build that trust it helps people feel part of something and it, you know, it, it's laying those um, expectations out of what you're expecting of your teams and the values of your organization. Um, and yeah, and, and they help support the development of your team as well. So um, I just wanted to throw that in there um, because that all is part of that, that coaching approach. And if you've got values to uh, refer back to it's almost like a framework for your organization um, I've been working with a, a CEO of a company and they didn't have they, ha they they did have values but they hadn't named their values and we did a, the values exercise they named their values and now they've identified them they've become part of their brand um, and it's really really strengthened the, the foundation and the framework of their business. And they use it, uh, they use their values when they're recruiting their, their teams. Um, and yeah, it, it's just made a massive difference. So if it's something that you haven't thought about, um, then, or maybe you need to revisit your values and, and tweak them and make sure they're, they're fit for purpose. Anything on values? We are going to go into another little reflection spot, but is there anything anybody would like to say on that? Just that that fits in with one of the other webinars as well, Joe. It's a nice little uh, segue over to there because 
when we talk about recruitment, we talk about recruiting on character and values and those sort of things. So this is the sort of thing that you, if you've recruited on these sort of things and that makes it easier then to work with those people because you've you set out your recruitment criteria, you're not getting someone with a completely different values and character traits and then go, yeah. why won't they be the ones that, that we need? Exactly. And also, you know, values um, may help you with decision making as well, such as with recruitment, uh, but also if, if work comes your way as an organisation or whatever, you might look at that work and think, not sure about doing it, should we do it? Does it meet, our, meet with our values? If it doesn't, don't do it. You know, it, it, it just gives you that really good grounding to make, um, to make some good decisions as well. Yeah, and we've done some... Uh... There's a webinar that's been done on personality profiling as well. But uh, for the other people that are watching this to look at that, that really helps with understanding where people are on various different spectrums and so that they do fit. And then if they don't fit, how do you work with them and stuff? So just a, yeah. another little segue into other webinars. We've got some coming up on resilience as well and, and, on, on, and, and on various areas of emotional intelligence, which might be quite useful. Fantastic. It's as if it was all planned. Mm. <laughs> all these wonderful links. Fantastic. So another little space for reflections, really, just thinking about the values, thinking about the skills that you might need to take in a, a coaching approach. Is it you in your organisation that's going to be managing and leading these young people or is it your team members? You know, do they have those skills that they need um, to take that coaching approach? So just a little bit of reflection time again, just to think about, is there anything that, that you need to look at in your organization or for yourself? So any thoughts? In terms of those core values, we're actually just at a stage now where we're, um, we're about to merge two companies. So we've looked at, there are various things we, 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 we need to do and um, I think identifying the core values would be really important and something that we need to do it obviously in advance of, of, of re recruiting later this year. Yeah, absolutely. When you bring in two organizations together, you know, that's absolutely fantastic, but you want to create a new foundation, don't you really, to, yeah. to propel that new organization forward and make sure that everybody's on the same page. And, and it's a great, you know, if you can do that as a team, to create your values, identify and agree your values, that's a really good way to bring those teams together as well. And you've, you've all got buy-in of that and you're all going to live and breathe them as well because that's the really important thing. You can have your values on your website or somewhere in your organisation, but if people aren't really embodying them, you know, it's they're just, they're just words. Yeah, so, they don't need you know, anything, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, um, yeah, really great thing to start with, with your organisation is looking at your values. Absolutely brilliant. Fantastic. Any other reflections from anybody else? OK. So um, I know some people that are watching or listening, um, you know, people like facts, stats and facts. So I have thrown a few stats and facts in here before we, we go a little bit. Um, further. So, uh, so facts from the ICF and the HCI. So some clear um, industry data which support the benefits of coaching. And this came from a survey building a coaching culture with millennial leaders, which shows how young leaders benefit from partnering with a coach and receiving training on how to use coaching skills with their peers and their teams. So according to the report, Leaders who use coaching skills and have coaching qualities such as emotional intelligence are most effective. They found coaching skills are considered essential competencies for first time people managers and that organizations are looking to expand the scope of leaders using coaching skills in the next five years. So when asked to describe the most effective management style, respondents most cited collaborative and coaching. So again, just thinking about the young people that you are now influencing who are going to go on to be our next leaders, you know, these are absolutely essential skills that people are looking for to employ them in the future. So, the, you know, and, and taking a coaching approach and helping them develop these skills is absolutely key. And then a little bit more industry insights. 
So I will just pop all these up for you to see. So in the yellow, organizations with a strong coaching culture. So organizations who rated themselves as having high employee engagement, they have the highest, um, they have a strong coaching culture. And organizations who reported 200, uh, 2016 revenue growth above industry uh, peers, again, they had a strong coaching culture. So creating that culture, coaching culture within your organization helps propel your business, your engagement, everything. If you get it right with your people, if you empower them and inspire them and motivate them and look after their well-being, the rest of it, the business will take care of itself. And it, it's really as, as, as simple as that. So, so just thinking about everything that you, you've heard in this webinar, um, and maybe you've already made some notes about what you might need to work on next. So have a little thing, what do you need to work on? What benefits will a coaching approach bring you? And what benefits will coaching bring to your team? So maybe, you know, write down some um, key points, you know, how, if you're already using coaching, absolutely fantastic. Um, is it something that you can strengthen? If you haven't used a coaching approach before, how are you maybe going to make, start, uh, make some little inroads into thinking about using that coaching approach? You know, what, what will you do? Um, and how do you think it would benefit your existing team? Where have you got challenges? How could a coaching approach help those challenges? So, and then next steps. So really thinking, like I said, about what, what you're gonna do, you know, what, what's your plan to really help and inspire these young people to get the best start that they can of their working life. Anything anybody would like to share at this point? Okay, Mark, sorry, did you want to share anything? Yeah, yeah, just in terms of, um, as, as a general thing, the whole reason for this webinar is you know coach and approach will bring huge benefits to them and their team as you said you know gone are the days when as a young person you just got shouted at told what to do and and you just accepted it because you know it, it, people call this this next generation the snowflake generation and i don't think that's necessarily fair but they like to be managed in a different way mm -hmm. You know, they don't, they're not willing to accept just getting shouted at by teachers, coaches, managers, so on and so forth. You know, they report you to HR, they, <laughs> they, they, they tell the head teacher, they tell their parents. And, you know, it's not, it's not acceptable. And to a certain extent, it's right because it doesn't bring the best out of people. No, it doesn't. And, and you know, they're, they're quite right. And, and this is where the next generation are expecting more from their employers. They're expecting more from us and our generation. And, um, and yeah, I, I'm with them on that. You know, they're not going to develop themselves if we're not going to help them, uh, you know, develop. And, um, and also just remembering through this whole taking a coaching approach. And if you're a manager or a leader, um, you know, of, of an organisation or a team, you don't have to have all the answers all of the time. It's impossible for you to have all the answers all of the time. And so by taking a coaching approach, you're allowing your team to then work out the answers and develop themselves. So that's a really good thing. And I think sometimes we get stuck in that cycle that when we are a manager or a leader or own a, a business, that we have to have all the answers. And if we don't have all the answers, then we failed and, and whatever. And it's absolutely not true. If you can bring a coaching culture into your organization where people learn off each other, they can expand their ideas, they can develop themselves, they can find the answers themselves, that's absolutely what you want, you know, you want to happen. And it takes the pressure off you as well, because you don't need to know all the answers. I think the, the key word from my perspective that you use there is culture. Yes. So, you know, I do a training course on culture and culture happens whether you plan it or not. But if you want to build a specific culture that links you to your business, your values, all those sort of things and makes your business grow and get the right people, then you've got to get the right people in. You've got to recruit the right people. You've got to coach them to be the level that you want. You know, yeah. I, I 
Do you find, Mark, as well, that that culture typically will just filter down from from the the MD or the management team, or or, or not? Yeah, deliber- deliberately or not. So culture will happen. Yeah. You whether you try and do it or not. So if you're not actively working on the culture, if you're not coach, because one of these things as well. So one of the reasons why we want this to happen is typically people start to invest in coaching and stuff like when they become a senior manager, leader, owner, director of a, of a business. And then they think, right, well, I need to go and get a, co- a business coach or a mentor now because it will help the business grow and, you know, and me become a better leader, manager and all those sort of things. Coaching is beneficial at any level because to me, and uh, I don't know, hopefully Joe agrees, I'm sure she does. Coaching is about people bringing the bringing the best out of people and then encouraging them to bring the best out of themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I'm so glad you've brought that point up, Mark, because, you know, in days gone by, it was executive coaching. It was CEOs that had coaching and, and, and the coaching didn't filter down um, the organisation. And yet now, over the last few years, it's really exploded and people have understood the value of coaching all your employees. And it it's a whole coaching, uh, yeah, a coaching culture. And, and like you say, if you don't work on your culture, the culture that could manifest itself could be really unkind and unpleasant culture to be in. So it's really about working on your culture and making that a key part of your strategy and your and your business and your um, you know your commitment to your your team as well. And I mean, I, I'm a big believer that coaching should be for everybody. Coaching should start right at primary schools, you know, and and helping people to um, you know find find everything that's good in themselves and develop themselves and um and and if if you're a manager or a leader you know or a business owner it's your responsibility to really look at your um uh, culture and really bring that coaching in if you can because it can only benefit it'll only benefit your uh, individuals and it'll benefit your your team uh, your you know your, your top line as well but most importantly it benefits the individuals and um yeah, what you you want everyone to come to work and have a good day at work. You want people to want to come to work, be passionate about work, and give that hundred and fifty percent because they 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 also feel supported and motivated as well. It's interesting because like going going into this today, I was just thinking about there's the sort of new members to the team, but really what you're saying is using this coaching approach. It really can can benefit the the, the wider culture w- within the yeah. organisation. Yeah, and, and I'm so glad you said that, John, because I'm hoping that that's what today will have um, you know, demonstrated to people. It's not just about the young people, although this is what we're, we're specifically talking about. It's about your whole organisation. So hopefully this has given the opportunity for people to step back and think about, well, what is our culture like? How do we manage and lead our teams? What do we need to do differently? Um, or pat yourself on the back because you're already doing the, the coaching and, and it's fantastic and you can see the benefits of it. Um, but I can guarantee if you take, if you start to look at that coaching approach and, and start to, um, you know, filter that out into your organisation, it will absolutely um, bring massive benefits. That's all it can do is, is bring benefits. Well, so well, just, sorry, just, Mark. Just related to that, Joe, as well. Um, you know, these are the people that are going to be interacting with your customers and other members of staff and all those sort of things. So if they are, you know, most people report their happiness at work is really, really heavily influenced by their line manager. You know, yeah. the old adage, people don't leave a business, they leave a manager. So, you know, if their experience at work is a really, really good one, i.e. their coach and the manager or coach or mentor or leader brings the best out of them, then the way they interact with your customers is going to be much better, especially, you know, in businesses where, or roles where they are going to be interacting with customers either now or eventually, you know, everyone would love their, their customer facing people to be really bought into the company. Yeah, absolutely. And so just thinking about that question that I asked at the beginning about who was your biggest influence. And I don't know if you guys, um, on the webinar have got somebody in mind and want to share that it would be great if you have um, if, does anybody want to share or do you want to keep it to yourselves no I don't mind sharing 
Um, but it wasn't my biggest influence in business wasn't at the beginning of my career, but in the middle. Okay. Uh, I, um, I had a boss um, who was ex forces. I, I did work quite a lot with him. I do. Um, and he was the first person that I felt really believed in me. And the first person that was willing to trust me to go off and try some of the things that I had ideas about and then explain to me why it didn't work when it all blew up. Brilliant. So, you know, it doesn't matter where your influence comes from, but the fact that that person influenced you and maybe, you know, helped change your thinking, the way that you um, approach things in the future and all that, you know, it, it's just that person will probably never know the influence that they had on you. I told him. Good, good. I'm glad you did. <laughs> Fantastic. Anybody else like to share who their biggest influence was? I think I've had then over the years, I've had some really good line managers and I've had some sort of distinctly average line managers, but I've always tried to, to, to learn something from them, whether it's something they do right or something they do wrong, maybe something that I'd like to replicate or, or something I'd like to improve. Um, so I, I don't think there's one standout sort of influence but I've tried to and I still do that now with people that I work with there are things that I think that, that they do that really really well um, and may, maybe I want to do that very differently but I just try and take that from from everybody that I work with. Yeah do you know I have exactly the same approach John that I try and learn something from everybody that I have an interaction with and either if that's somebody I've worked with or just met or had a one-to-one -one or whatever I always try and learn something from them and then that helps influence how you develop um, and learn going forward as well and I think if you can if you can take that approach a little bit as well then you're always going to keep learning um, and you know understand where there's good things to take from people and some things you just want to leave leave behind maybe yeah. But, um, but yeah if you can just if you can find learning in everything you do then you're always going to continue to learn anybody else like to share anything else Okay, so just on, about just on this, Joe, as well, just related to that, I think because sadly there's so few and far between those people in our lives, we remember the standout ones, we remember the, the teacher that brought something out of us, we remember the, mm. you know, the boss that brought something out of us, and for most of us, a parent is probably, or both our parents are probably in there. Sadly, it's so few and far between, we don't think every single one we into. So it shows a need for this absolutely we, yeah. we, we kind of need to get better at this stuff from teaching through to parenting through to you know line yeah. or, or whatever it's a big learning curve for all of us isn't it and and you know if we can just look at what we're doing personally and how we, we influence other people or how we empower other people and interact with other people if we can all um you know consciously think about that then hopefully we can make more of a positive impact and sort of on that note just thinking about you know everything that you've heard in this webinar about developing our young people um you know really giving them a great opportunity you know how will you like to be remembered and what will your legacy be so you know think about these young people coming in and think about 20 years time where you know um joe blogs has come in They've had their, their um, experience with you with the Kickstart. And in 20 years time, they're a manager or a leader or doing whatever it is that they're doing. And they're thinking, do you know what? Actually, you know, I, I'm doing what I'm doing. And I have this approach because I worked for John Jeffries and he gave me a fantastic start and he taught me all this stuff and he empowered me. And that's where my influence came from. And um, so, yeah, really think about what your impact is on those young people. Um, it's so important because you are starting their working life and, and shaping their, their future. Um, so yeah, a anybody, any thoughts on that? How will you like to be remembered and what will your legacy be? Related to that, Joe, what's been really interesting in when we've been doing this is the amount of people, when I've been networking, speaking to people about the scheme, you know, people my generation and older have talked about similar schemes. So, you know, people talk about, you know, when they started on a YTS or a YOP scheme or 
or something like that. That was their first thing. Yeah. And they do tend to remember the, the very formative experiences in their lives because they, you know, they went into a business, spent six months, a year, 18 months or whatever the, the scheme was, learning a trade, learning a sector, learning skills and experience. And, and a lot, you know, a lot of these people are running their own businesses or their managers or leaders or owners or directors of businesses now. And it, it, it gave them a really good platform. So yeah, I think it's yeah. really important to say this, that, you know, this is the springboard to someone's f- future career. And who knows where these people will be in, in 20 odd years time and so on and so forth. Yeah, and I, I've got a, a really, really good friend who started off on the YTS scheme, and she's now the um, general manager of a very, very large transport company. And that just shows, you know, it doesn't matter where you start from, you can propel yourself to wherever you want to be if you're willing to learn. And, you know, if you're given those opportunities and empowered and, and developed. So anybody else like anything else? To share. Yeah, I think I'd want my person that I was mentoring to go high, to fly higher than I did. Oh, you're flying high, Jenny. Yes, but I would like them to be stratospherically flying. Okay. I think that if we're investing in in young people for that, you know, at the beginning of their career, then and I and I think that people have greater expectations of their career now than they did have. Uh, when I started out in the world of work, I would like to think that they achieved the thing that they dreamed of doing. If I can get out of them what it is they want to do, and then they go on and they actually do the thing that they dreamed of doing, then I think you've really achieved something. Absolutely, absolutely. And and that's the, the final statement, really. You know, we, we want to make a positive impact on the next generation so they can make a positive impact on the next generation that they're influencing and empowering and developing as well. Um, so unless there's any questions, that's me. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. That was excellent. No yeah, problem. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Joe, thanks. I'd just like to reiterate, I think it was really brilliant. Um, some really useful um, guidance. You know, most of this, most people will be watching this back on on playback on the YouTube channel and so on and so forth. So I'd encourage them to get in touch with you if they've got any specific questions, if you're okay. Absolutely, yeah, all my contact details are there. So happy to answer questions or have a chat with anybody. Absolutely, just get in touch. Yeah, and you know, there's loads of resources on coaching in businesses and, and so on and so forth. I think the key thing is just to, to start and to have it as a, a, you talked about growth mindset, but almost having a mindset of, being a coach and and then yeah. trying to bring the best the best out of them because it's a different way of viewing of viewing and, and, and you know if, if you just make a start with thinking about the language that you're using and if somebody comes and asks you a question stop and think I'm not going to give them the answer I'm actually going to empower them to find the answer out themselves so even if you just make some tweaks like that then you're already starting that coaching journey Okay. All right. Uh, thanks, Joe. Thanks, everyone. And um, yeah, hopefully you can join us for uh, future webinars and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. That was great. Thank you, John. Thank you.